hi everyone welcome to my channel now in this video i am going to start the chapter gravitation so we'll be discussing kepler's law now before we go into the details of this kepler's law let us see what we will be studying in this chapter so this chapter starts with the introduction and then the first part is the kepler's law now kepler's law there are three laws first law is the law of orbits the second is law of areas and the third is law of periods then we will be studying newton's law of gravitation from that we will calculate the force between masses in case we have more than two masses how to calculate the net force then we will be studying about acceleration due to gravity acceleration produced due to the gravitation force of earth or in that material in other planets also and how does this acceleration due to gravity varies with height with depth with latitude with uh, velocity of planet planet those things will be studying variation of acceleration due to gravity then we will be studying about the gravitational potential energy and last it will lead to the topic escape velocity now from this force between masses from that we will proceed on to the topic satellites we will study about with what velocity the satellite the satellite must be projected so that it start revolving around the earth we will calculate its period we will also calculate its energy then we will learn about geostationary satellite we will also study about the weightlessness inside a satellite so these are the things we will be studying in the chapter gravitation and uh, we will start today with in this video with kepler's laws so let's start so before we proceed to understand the first Kepler's laws. There are three laws. First law is the law of orbits. So before we go into the detail of this law, we need to understand a few terms. See, this is an ellipse. Okay. Now a circle has one center and an ellipse has two foci. Okay. So foci is, is a plural form of focus. Okay. So it has two foci and uh, sun is at one of the foci so this is one foci this is another foci so sun is at one of the two foci so let us assume that sun is at this particular location okay so this is the position of the sun okay so this is the position of the sun so the law of orbits says that all planets move around the sun in elliptical orbits with sun at one of the foci. So this is first law. So if this is earth, so this is earth which will rotate in this elliptical orbit with sun at one of the foci. So for law of orbits, this is the statement you need to write. Law of orbits says that all the planets move in elliptical orbits with sun at one foci of the ellipse okay now this is the elliptical part along which this planet is moving all the planets are moving and this is sun as at one foci okay now this point p point is the closest point and a point is the farthest point for from the sun okay so this point p the closest point closest point it is called perilion it is called perilion p e r i h e l i o n okay and a it is the farthest point and it is called a is called aphelion a p h e l i o n okay and this line ap semi major axis is the half of ap okay so semi major axis so this is the major axis and this is the minor axis so minor axis and uh, the semi major axis half of semi major axis is so semi major axis is ap so semi major semi major axis means half of ap okay so ap is the major axis half of semi major axis means half of ap this distance we need to define later on this will be useful okay so a is called aphelion p 
P is called perihelion and semi major axis means half of the distance AP. AP is the major axis. Okay. So let us mark this distance as twice A. Okay. And this distance as twice B. Okay. So this is law of orbits and these are the few terms associated with the ellipse which will be useful in the later part of understanding the other two laws. So second is the law of areas. Now what it says, suppose this, the planet is at this particular position. So this is the radius, this line joining any planet to the sun and uh, it moves from this particular position to this particular position in some time interval. Okay. So this line sweeps this area. Okay. So the law says this line swept by this, this the area swept by this line joining the planet with the sun, it sweeps equal area in equal time interval. Okay. It sweeps equal area in equal time interval. Like suppose in say time t, it moves from this particular point to this particular point. So this is the area swept. Okay. Now in same time, suppose it sweeps. So this planet moves from this particular position to this particular position. Okay. So this will be the line joining the planet and the sun. So this will be the area swept. Okay. So it says that if both the time intervals are equal, then the area will also be same. Okay. So the statement is so the statement is the line that sweeps any planet to the sun sweeps equal areas in equal time interval. Okay. So let us try to understand this statement uh, in another way. See, this, uh, suppose this is the elliptical path in which the planet is moving. So this is the sun. Okay. Now in, in particular time interval, suppose the planet moves from this point to this point. Okay. This is the line joining the planet and the sun. Okay. So this line sweeps this area. It has moved from this point to this point. So this is the area swept by the line as the planet moves from this point to this point. Okay. Now in the same time interval, the planet moves from this point to this point. So this is the line joining the planet and the sun. Okay. So now this is the area swept. Okay. So these two area need to be equal. Okay. Now if this need two areas need to be equal, it implies that when the planet is far away from the sun, its velocity will be a bit slow because see area is equal to so this length and this length. These are far much greater than this length, these two lengths. Okay. So if the area need to be balanced, the area need to be equal, then this length must be much larger as compared to this length, then only the area will be balanced. So when the planet is far off, it will move slowly. Okay. When it is close to the sun, it will move fast. It will move slowly here, it will move fast. So, so it moves fast, then only this area of this part will be equal to the area of this part because this length is much shorter than this length. Okay. So law of areas says that this line sweeps equal area. The line connecting the planet and the sun sweeps equal area in equal interval of time. We can also say that the aerial velocity is constant. We can also say that aerial velocity, that is rate of change in area, area swept per unit time. So aerial velocity, aerial velocity is constant. Okay. So now let us prove this statement. Okay. Now suppose this this distance is r and the angle through which the planet has moved so this radius vector has swept an angle d theta okay now if we assume this to be a small triangle and for this arc see this is if this is radius is r this is theta this will be r d theta okay now if we approximate this to be a triangle then area of this triangle will be half into base into height so d a is equal to r half into base into height. So that is 
r square by 2 d theta okay this is da so what will be da by dt da by dt will be r square by 2 da by d theta by dt okay this is da equal to r square by 2 d theta so da by dt equal to r square by 2 d theta by dt okay but d theta by dt rate of change in angular displacement is the angular velocity omega so this is omega r square by 2 okay now if i multiply so we have so we have da by dt is equal to omega r square by 2 okay now if i multiply by m multiply with m on both sides so m da by dt is equal to m omega r square now m r square it is moment of inertia i so this is i omega by 2 okay i omega by 2 so but what is i omega i omega is angular momentum l is equal to i omega l is the angular momentum okay so da by dt is equal to l by this is l this is 2 so m comes here so this is l by twice m okay now in the chapter rotational motion rigid body and rotation motion we have already seen that if external torque is zero this angular momentum remains constant now this planet is revolving around the sun because of the gravitational force of attraction between the sun and the planet and there is no external torque so in that case this l is constant mass of the planet is already constant so this implies this entire term is constant so this gives da by dt is constant so we have aerial velocity is constant okay so this is law of areas so next we will proceed to the law of periods so the third law the law of periods it says that the square of period of revolution of a planet is proportional to cube of semi major axis of the ellipse traced out by the planet okay so see this is the sun and the planet earth it is revolving around this elliptical orbit okay ap is the major axis it is of length twice a so semi major axis means a okay now if t is the period of revolution it is it says that square of period of revolution is proportional to cube of semi major axis so major axis is twice a so semi major axis is a so it says that t square if t is the period of revolution t square square of the period of revolution is proportional to cube of the semi major axis t square proportional to a cube okay so this is the law of periods okay so now let us analyze this law see this planet when it is revolving around the sun if we approximate this orbit to be a circular orbit okay and it, since it is moving in a circular path if it is moving in a circular path it is acted upon by a centripetal force and who is providing the centripetal force centripetal force is provided by the gravitational force of the sun okay so centripetal force centripetal force it is provided by the gravitational force okay though we have we will be learning about the newton's law of gravitation in the later topic but uh, using your previous knowledge i will be writing the expression for gravitation force directly so if mp is the mass of planet okay and ms is the mass of sun okay this is the mass of planet and ms is the mass of sun okay so this is planet so earth this is planet mp and this is mass of sun ms okay and this radius we have taken to be r and we have approximated it to be a circle okay so in that case centripetal force expression for centripetal force mv square by r so here m, m m is mass of the planet so mp v square by r okay v is the speed of revolution okay. now what is the gravitation force gravitation force is g mp ms divided by r square gravitational force g m1 m2 by r square so mp mass of planet ms mass of sun r square okay so now centripetal force is provided by the gravitational force so hence these two quantities must be equal 
So in that case, we have, see this MPMP cancels out. So this R, R square. So we have V is equal to G MS by R square root of this. So this is the speed of revolution of the planet around the sun. Okay. Now, if T is the period of revolution, okay, if capital T is the period of revolution, period of revolution, period of revolution, okay, so in that case, I can write T is equal to if the planet is revolving in the sun, if we are approximating it, that the planet now, this is the sun, okay, so this is the sun and the planet, it is revolving in a circular path of radius R, okay, so and with speed V, so time period will be circumference divided by speed okay but speed we have obtained it this expression so this is twice pi r divided by g m s divided by r square root of this okay so this is twice pi by square root of g m s this goes up so we have r raised to power 3 by 2 okay now if i take cube on or square on both sides so this is t squaring both sides we have t square is equal to this will be 2 pi will become 4 pi square and this square root will be removed so this is g m s into r cube now this term 4 pi square by g m s okay this is a constant okay this value is constant okay now if you refer your book the value of this constant is around 2.97 into 10 power minus 12 second square per meter cube okay now you need not by heart these things this is just for the sake of information i'm giving but the main idea is this term is a constant so if this term is constant that gives t square proportional to r cube okay t square square of the period is proportional to cube of the radius okay now for elliptical orbit this r is displaced by semi major axis so for so for elliptical orbits r is replaced by a the semi major axis so we have t square proportional to r cube okay so these are the three kepler's laws i hope this was clear to you you can go through this things once again if you like and uh, go through you can also go through your ncrt textbook i have prepared these things based on your ncrt textbook and i hope if, after you read the ncrt textbook and then if you watch this video uh, this will be much more helpful for you so good luck